Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Boardsy, and welcome to the heavily anticipated top five Chinese mice slash top five budget gaming mice. As always, with my top five list, there are going to be more than five mice featured, and most of these mice are under $50, which for wireless mice is just a ridiculously low price. I obviously have not tested everything that China has thrown at us this year, but this is a good um, just place to start if you're looking for a budget mouse, I guess. But first and foremost, kind of honorable mentions, if you do have a larger hand, because most of these budget options are a bit smaller, I do have a few recommendations. The Ajaz AJ139 Pro, I've never liked mice from Ajaz. This isn't the highest quality offering, like the coating's really cheap. Mouse 1 and 2 feel vastly different in terms of like actuation force, but it is just a decent large palm grip shape. It's a 60 gram mouse, very flat sides. I haven't had a good time claw gripping it whatsoever, um, but if you do have larger hands, this is a viable option. I don't really trust it quality wise. I haven't put a ton of time on it, hence why it's not really in the main top five. And of course, a budget mouse video. This is not a Chinese mouse, but the Death Adder V3 Wired from Razer. Uh, just an incredible option. It's $60 at the moment. It's often even cheaper, like 50. And yeah, this is an 8K polling compatible wired mouse. It comes in at 57 grams, which for the large shape is really good. Super good coating, really solid build quality all around. I would definitely recommend going for a wired Death Adder V3 over the Ajaz 139 Pro. But yeah, it is what it is. And I do want to quickly mention the Attack Shark R1 because this is a cheap ergo from Attack Shark, who is going to be featured later on in this video. But unfortunately, they used a 3311 sensor instead of a 3395. So this is like a mini Death Adder style shape. But in my opinion, just due to the wire, like just the sensor, it just doesn't feel as good. It is smaller, as you can see. It does come in at, I believe, 61 grams. And quality wise, I did just get it yesterday, as I mentioned. But it's solid. So if this did have a 3395, if they do release a version with that down the line, I would probably recommend it. But currently it's just, it's not something that I'm going to recommend. And now we're going to get to number four on the list. And that is going to be the Felina S450 Pro. Um, this is one that I've been getting begged to review. And honestly, for good reason, the price this mouse is at like under $40. It's pretty incredible. It's basically a G Wolves Hot S Plus clone. So kind of like a smushed up GPX shape where it is going to be a bit higher profile and just a short mouse in general and all around it's really hard to criticize this mouse it's under 60 grams um, clicks and build quality wise it's very impressive like the sidewalls it might be doing the like PCB supporting the sidewall strap because it just feels like an incredibly solid mouse um, so for the price it's just undeniably a banger I did see JQ shilling this mouse as I presume a lot of you guys um, heard about this mouse from him and he does say that you got to move the battery back a little bit for weight balancing purposes and you definitely can notice it's front heavy so if you do get this mouse I would recommend doing that but I'm not gonna lie just know I'm not really gonna use this mouse enough to warrant the mods the mouse skates are also just an incredibly bad design but this has been updated on the newer batch you literally can't even fit dots on this you'd have to like sand the base down to change the skates and my skates were coming up a bit from the ends but I've managed to push them down just fine so yeah really my main issue with this mouse is the mouse skates and that has been fixed on the newer batch also there is a lot of like post travel on the side buttons they do go pretty much inside the shell um so yeah not going to be pixel perfect quality wise out of the box but if you're just looking for a small claw grip mouse this is definitely one of the better options under 50 dollars out there um now number three is going to be the VGN Dragonfly F1 Pro. This is the max edition I have, but I honestly don't even recommend that. The only difference is that it's a bigger battery, which just adds a little bit to the weight. Um, and even if you are using 4K, I don't know, I would just prefer a few grams lighter of a mouse. But what this really has is quality and just a solid design. It's a unique shape. Most of these Chinese mice are just kind of clones of something, but the Dragonfly, it is a medium sized flatter shape. It does have nice comfort grooves on the main clicks. It is a little bit wider than something like the Attack Shark. So I would not really recommend it for fingertip as much as some of the other mice on this list. And yeah, I'm not gonna act like I mained this mouse, but whenever I plug it in to test it, I'm just always impressed by how well-tuned the clicks feel, the side buttons, just the shell itself. It really is an impressive mouse for the $50 price. And I believe that the non-max version comes in below 50 grams. It's just a pretty safe shape, safe recommendation, higher quality than most of the other Chinese clones that I've tried. I've heard it comes out of the same factory as Ninjutsu mice. But yeah, this is a mouse that's a little bit too small to be something that I would main like every day, but just 
really no problems using it. It is 4K compatible, I believe, if you pay $12 for a dongle, so all the more power to you if you decide to make this mouse 4K. Coming in at number two is going to be, I don't even know, the Attack Shark X3 Zaopin Z1 Pro. They're both both pretty much top tier Chinese mice. I would say the Attack Shark X3 is just a little bit lower quality though. Mainly the clicks on my unit are just, they have a cheap feeling. They feel like the OG Omron 50Ms maybe, just the lightest click I've ever had, but to the point where they're too light, there's almost zero tactile response. It, it's a really unique click feeling that doesn't quite compare to anything. There is also um, some sensor issues and wonkiness out of the box. I explained how to get around that in my full review. You basically have to download another mouse's software and tweak a few settings and you're good. But what's really impressive about the Attack Shark X3 is that it's just a great shape for fingertip. The slope on the main clicks, it's very comfortable in my opinion. The grip width is thin. And yeah, this is really one of those budget mice that I've recommended a lot because I believe for $40, what, what more can you ask for? Um, the clicks, if you do like fingertip and click them towards the back, they are a little bit heavier. Um, I did just check they are Kill 8.0s. I knew they were an Omron 50 of, so that's just how light they feel if you click towards the top. Side buttons, build quality is actually very refined and solid feeling. Scroll wheel, no issues with that. The sensor, I already mentioned, you need the Kaisona mouse software. Um, but all around, if you are looking for a small budget mouse, um, the Attack Shark X3 is one of my top recommendations. And you might wonder why I put the Attack Shark X3 over the Dragonfly F1, and I, I really don't know. And yeah, it's really a toss up between these mice. Neither one of them clears the other. The Attack Shark X3 is easier to get, cheaper, more widely available in the US. Like it's on US Amazon. It always has a discount or a coupon sale going. So I do think it is a more accessible, better budget mouse. Uh, but just comparing the mice head to head, like it's just choose whichever you think is going to be better for your hand style, your preferences, all of that jazz. I would say that the Dragonfly is probably just a little bit better out of the box, just a few percent. But yeah, performance wise, I would say that they're very similar. And now number one, the king of budget mice, in my opinion, is the Zaopin Z1 Pro. This is a 47 gram, I believe, egg shape. And yeah, just kind of clears the rest of the egg shape and small budget mouse market. It is available under $50, and I would truly recommend this over something like a Fantech Aria, uh, definitely over a Razer Orochi at this point. But if you are not looking for an egg shape, if that's not the style of shape that really works for your hand, then just don't even consider this mouse, because it'll probably just be awkward. It does not fit in my hands for claw grip whatsoever. It's just simply too small. And yeah, that's ultimately why this isn't something that I genuinely use consistently at least in Fortnite is because I to use a shape like this I need to relax claw it to be able to hit the side buttons and it just doesn't work on this mouse it's just a little bit too small and I, that's what I love about this mouse the people who use it they're like a cult people are getting pissed off and be like why don't you use this mouse and that's ultimately the reason why I'm um, finger tipping it in aim trainers I really don't mind it since it is an egg shape it does get wide and the button height is a bit higher than what I'm used to especially like if I'm gripping it towards the back here but Really, those are nitpicks. This is a really good egg, just small mouse if you are looking for one. Um, under $50, that's probably the best budget mouse in my opinion. There's no issues with build quality. None of these mice have nice premium coatings because that does, as far as I know, add pretty significantly to cost. So a way to keep them so cheap is by just using the default plastic coating. And looking at my desk, I realized I forgot to make the number five mouse, which is the MCHO's A5. Um, so this is kind of a honorable mention. I believe this is the Pro Max version because it has a Bluetooth button as well. Um, and yeah, the A5 is a true GPX mini. A lot of these Chinese shapes like kind of try to be a GPX mini, but this one, it really does feel like it in hand, like the hump. The sides, they just have GPX vibes, which I don't know why that's been so hard for companies to do, um, but MCHOS is kind of the first one to do it. And I don't love it. The mouse comes in at 60 grams. It weighs um, literally exactly the same as a normal GPX. One thing this does have over it is less mushy side buttons. Yeah, well, I don't believe that this is truly like a better mini GPX. It's just not a bad mouse. Like I have it connected to the 4K dongle. The performance is good. The buttons feel solid. The mouse skates aren't great, but you can obviously swap those off. And and yeah, again, for $50, I don't think this is a bad offering, but it's just not something I would really recommend to people
people who want small light mice as much as like some of those top three options and yeah these are all really good chinese budget mice i know i'm gonna get a few comments like all mice are made in china like some of these mice have software that is in chinese are we really gonna pretend that's the same as a fucking super light it is not a company that's incorporated in China mainly makes mice for the Chinese audience. I, I call those Chinese mice. You know, it is what it is. Um, but that rant aside, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Um, the, this was the best budget mouse edition, but I could also make a video just on the best Chinese mice in general. But yeah, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, um, because I do think that there are a lot of true gems in here for under $50. And think about it, you could buy like three of the five mice mentioned in this video for the price of one GPX2. And I'm not saying you'll have a better time doing that, but it is just, it is the fact of the matter. So um, that's going to be all. Any questions, make sure to let me know in the comments. I know there are a million Chinese mice that I need to review, the VXER1 or whatever, something. Yeah, I'll, I will get to it. Um, but yeah, this is from 2023 that I've tried the best budget mice. That's going to be all. Peace out.